My name's John Young and lived most of my life here in the Kimberleys and the parts of the Northern Territory. I'm 67 years of age and uh, I was in the Kimberleys at the time and witnessed the spraying of this um, defoliant. Uh, now, my first experience with that was I, I saw my mates using it and I observed that there was no writing safety warnings on the drums, okay? There was a TD-24, whatever that was supposed to mean. But they were naval grey issue drums and there was no uh, use protective clothing or nothing on them. So people uh, at that time, they were happy to get a job. A lot of those boys, job opportunities were limited. So they jumped for it and there was no instructions really, it was pretty, you know, light-handed uh, to wear protective clothing, but the reality was they couldn't because of the heat and the humidity. No one could keep that gear on in that climate, the jackets and, and hoods and that. So I argue with my brother, deceased now, that uh, he said it was getting in through the scratches of the Nagura burn. And I said, no, no, bro, I said, this is a defoliant they use in Vietnam, it goes through the skin because I used it on the Ho Chi Minh Trail in Vietnam. Yep. Okay, not only to clear the jungle, but clear the people underneath it. And they're still coming into Cambodia today yep. as, as um, you know, con been contaminated. Still yeah. yeah, so, um, and when I got my first real wake up call, Mookie McMahon, another brother years ago, and I went, uh, uh, he told me, when Paddy and I went down to Broome to Kennedy Hill to spray this prickly pear, it's a big cactus, it's huge, it's got big long spines on it, come from Argentina. And it nearly took over Queensland, actually. They, they tried to fire it, they tried to chain it, they couldn't get rid of it, they'd bring a bug in to get rid of it. Anyway, he sprayed it, and it's as high as this building, at least. Four o'clock in the afternoon, I'll never forget that. And we went back eight o'clock next morning, and it was stone cold, dead, dead, I'm not talking about dying or half the head was dead and my hairs went up on the back of my neck and I said to old bro, I said, Paddy, I said, Jesus Christ, bro, this is, this is bad news, this shit. I said, what would kill a prickly pear cactus like that? So I asked Mookie and he, without even thinking twice, he said, Agent Orange, youngie. And that's when I become aware of it. Another fellow I saw in his prime, one of the Gerards, young Gerards from Wyndham, Omagari Way, somewhere there. He had a rash, and he was in his prime, a rash on his arm, full blood fella. And I said to him, what's that rash, bro? He said, oh, I'm spraying this stuff around the diversion dam, you know? Mm. Oh, yeah. And um, for APB. Within two weeks, he was dead. I couldn't believe it. The guy was in his prime, like Victor Bronger would have been that kind of bloke in his prime. Yeah. And over the years, I've watched I watched all my mates dropping off the perch one at a time and they asked me to put my hand up for it and I said, well, not really going to, all I want, really what I want is a, is a resolution for old girl before she totally goes. I said, with me, I said, I, did, I, I didn't work for the APB personally, I would, would be not even title the workers' compensation. I said, however, I was around the area where it was hosed down off trucks in the front of Mum's place where it killed the big tree and died. We all were, even Chuchi, a whole lot of us. We, did, we didn't know what was going on and what we were up against. And I said, knowing what I know about lawyers and what I've had to go through for inheritances and all that, I said, if I put my hand up, they will go right back to the early 80s and they will say, Mr Young, you weren't really looking after yourself in those days, were you? because I was detoxed twice in the Derby Hospital. So they will go back and dig up as far back as they can. Anything they can get on. That's right. So I said, it's not, I said, I've survived cancer, I've survived a massive heart attack, I said, I've got sugar diabetes. I said, there's not much more they can throw at me. Um, every 10 years I get a bit superstitious. And um, so I don't know where the cancer came from because I was expect being a heavy smoker, at the time I used to smoke a tin of log cabin a day, I was expecting the cancer to be lung or throat or something, not in my neck. I had this massive tumour in my neck and I went to this doctor, I heard her say she was a surgeon in Broome last time I was here. And I said to her, look, I said, 
cut this bastard out. I can't stand it anymore. It's too painful. She said, oh, John, she said, that's tiger country. She said, you'll have to, you know, go to Perth. And, and I said, yeah, and go on the waiting list. You know, and this thing's moving. She cut it out with a local anesthetic and she said, oh my God, she said, it's huge, the size of a golf ball. Well, it was right through me, under my arms, in my throat, in my neck, in my chest. So I did three months of intensive radiology at Fremantle Hospital and a month of intensive radiology, uh, radiology at Royal Perth. And I was lucky. It was 10 years ago. We got on it. And at the time, they gave me this paperwork to fill about what exposure I'd had to metals. Well, now, when you're looking down the gun barrel, you're not thinking about filling out paperwork, believe me. You know, you're thinking about staying alive. So I discarded it, not even thinking about Agent on it. Never crossed my mind until Drysdale brought it up to me. He said, you would have had exposure to it, Johnny. And I, I probably that I'd never really give it a second thought. Dickie was using the stuff when I first met him at Fitzroy Crossing. I, he was using spraying Parkinsonian that day. Not Nagura Burr. Cyril discovered Nagura Burr. Yeah. Okay. But Dickie was spraying Parkinsonia, which grows in clumps. And you can't get horses, once it gets away, it gets run. You can't get horses and cattle through it. So they brought that in from Asia. And another thing I can't think of is around, for, for shade. Yeah, around, yeah, for around cattle yards and troughs, okay? And of course, when the rains come, the seeds, the way it went down the creek, you know, like so many things introduced. It's a dioxin. It never goes away. It doesn't dissolve. The Nazis invented it after the Second World War. Yep. Sometimes, you know, when they were out at Nukenbar, we'd think yep. nothing of grabbing a cart and a piss and go over and visit them, you know, on the yep. weekend, the day off. So we'd all roll our swags out where it was mixed off the tailgate. Yep. Some of us slept on it. So never give it a second thought. Yep. Paddy Watson was an exception to the rule. Paddy was superstitious of it all the time and washed up, meticulously washed up after him because he was the cook. Yeah, he was like, the cook. The cook. That's probably why Pat's alive, but I'm not saying he didn't have any exposure, you know. Um, but Cyril was in the prime of his life. He went off in no time. Sago uh, and a number of others uh, over the years. but. Every, I've watched successive decades of, of Labor, Liberal prom, yeah. Premiers come in, all with these grandiose promises. Yeah. And then when it comes to the... Comes to the crunch, they all uh, change their mind. Yes, they all change, shift the goalposts. Yeah. I just wanted to come today and, and acknowledge and say that I witnessed, I did witness the use of this stuff. I don't say I was... Um, contaminated by any measure. I suppose I did have some exposure, to what degree I couldn't tell you. Uh, but I witnessed the use of it. Uh, I seen my brother using it with a backpack with no shirt on, uh, no protective gear, and then likewise Sago. The rest of the boys uh, witnessed Paddy Watson in Kennedy Hill, what it did. I got the word from the horse's mouth, Mookie. Because they were sending through the Yanks when they send a patrol in with a chopper, they get out and they do a little patrol around for a couple of hours, they get back in the chopper. Our boys went on seven day bivouacs yep. through contaminated area, which they didn't tell blokes like Mookie. Yep. And that's how he ended up with a brain. Yep. Two days before his pension, head full of brain tumours, which I thought was absolutely bloody kick in the guts. Well, I'd like to see something fast tracked. Personally, for me, for old girl, okay, um, you know that poor woman's lived for years under injustice. You know, lost the family, member of the family, and uh, I just, I just love to see some sort of resolution or outcome just on her behalf, because I've always loved that woman. She's been a mum to me since I was 19, and uh, that's. As far as I, I, I can see, I've always had a home at her place, I've always had a house, I've never been judged. Uh, you know, I've always been included as family and I have very strong feelings about this in regard for justice for a son. Okay, so, so it's just something would happen, some sort of resolution for her so she can rest in peace. What I uh, get disillusioned about is with the whole thing, 
is a lack, and, I, and you probably heard me say it on Facebook, is a lack of voice, a lack of um, substance, someone with conviction behind this as a fight, personal fight, not just a poly talk, a talk fest. Yeah. You know what I mean? Something with a bit of teeth to get a result.